Hi, Steve here again. I wanted to share another five minute chat with you. This time I'd like to talk about cancer, the big C. A lot of people get that diagnosis and go, that's all over with. And then the big other consideration that comes in, oh, now I've got to go on chemotherapy, radi radiation. I want to share some ideas with you today that at least give you some food for thought. Cancer, we can't say, FDA is not going to let me stand here and tell you that I can cure cancer or that we, can, we know how to cure cancer. But I want to say that there are some options besides chemotherapy and radiation that many people have used and overcome the cancer. And so the first one I would like to share with you is frequencies. Back in the 1930s, there was a fellow by the name of Royal Rife, who was a pretty interesting fellow. He never had any major big degrees like MIT or anything like that. He wasn't a physician, but he was very smart. And he applied his knowledge. One of the things he did was he made a microscope that was the most powerful microscope that had ever been developed to his day. Electron microscopes can actually blow things up bigger than what his microscope could do, but his microscope could observe living organisms, bacteria, viruses, as they were actually in vitro or in life situations. And one of the things he started doing was he had this idea that if you could come up with a frequency, well, first of all, how he came up with the idea of frequency was he needed to stain these organisms some way so that you could see them contrasted against the tissue that they were in. And he found that light, different colors of light, could be used so that the stain, staining, uh, didn't kill the organism so he could still see them moving around and see how they reacted to different stimuli. So, as he was working with this, he also discovered light being a frequency, as sound is. He got the idea one day that if you took a resonant frequency, some of you have seen the Memorex advertisement where a glass is sitting there and this opera singer starts to sing this note louder and louder and louder, and it, when that note reaches that same resonant frequency of the glass, the glass just shatters. Well, that's what Royal Rife started doing with bacteria and viruses. He started finding what their resonant frequency was, and then he would apply that frequency and essentially blow them up. They, they would just disintegrate. So he started cataloging the different uh, organisms he was working with, and eventually was able to identify the cancer virus. So that was pretty exciting to him because he's going like, now we've got a cure for cancer. And this was back in the 1930s. And some of you are probably asking, why haven't we heard about this? Well, I'll give you a little bit of that too. But first of all, let's take a look at what he did. He went to several large hospital universities and said, send me your most uh, far gone cancer patients. And we're going to do a study. We're going to see if we can actually stop the cancer. Um, he wasn't even allowed to say the word cure back then. But make it so that they were not being bothered by cancer anymore. Uh, he used all kinds of little euphemisms and words to not say cure. But anyway, so they brought, I'm forgetting how many patients it was, but it was a, it was a fair number. And they set up the how it was going to be done, and started the treatments. Within just a few weeks, over 80% of them did not have cancer in the body anymore. And there was three of them that, that were left, and he, that within the time frame of the, of the study, and Royal said, well, why don't we keep on treating them? Those three, within the next three weeks, were also free of cancer symptoms. So essentially, even though it took a little bit longer, 
there was 100% effectiveness of taking care of the cancer. Now today, some people will talk about Royal Rife. The sad thing is, is that there was a, a I'm not, I'm, I have to be careful how I say this, but there were people in place who didn't want to see a simple, cheap way of curing cancer. And so they made sure that this didn't get out. In fact, what was put in the newspapers within weeks was scrubbed. And the only ones that are left were ones that one of his lab assistants saw what was happening and he was able to secret away some of these things to keep them for some of us down the road who might be interested. I had the good fortune of meeting with a fellow up in Oregon who had one of Royal's, Royal Rife's original frequency generators. And he also had copies of all of his notes with all of the different frequencies. And I don't want to, I may be going a little longer, five minutes on this one, but I, I need to tell you this. I won't tell you his name because he has to be careful how he presents this stuff as well, but he and his wife, their daughter, had leukemia. And they didn't know about the frequencies when they started treatment on her, and so they just followed the doctor. What does the doctor say we should do? Oh, we've got to do chemotherapy. And what happened was is that the, they used too much of the chemo on, the, on this little girl and they actually damaged her heart. And so essentially they sent her home and said, well, there's nothing we can do. Well, they said, there must be something we can do. So they started researching and they ran across Royal Rife's information and studies that he had done. And they said, well, look, what do we have to lose? Let's try it. In the long run, they actually ended up curing their daughter of the leukemia Unfortunately, she still passed away because her heart had been damaged by the chemotherapy. And from that day forward, my friend and his wife and many others joining them have been operating a clinic of sorts. They don't call it a clinic because they don't want to be brought down for trying to practice medicine without a license. We can't do that. But what they do is, uh, when you walk in his door, he says, I've got a bunch of fun stuff here. I'm going to show you what each one can do and you just start playing around with it and see what, what happens to you. And many, many people, I talked with many people coming through that, that are using these different technologies and, and the frequencies is one of them. Royal Rife frequencies is one of them that is the big, and there's a whole machine there that's called the MOPA um, that is actually projecting these frequencies throughout the day. And many people are just going in there and sitting around soaking up those frequencies and telling me these incredible stories of, of their, uh, dare I say, the weird healing. <laughs> um, this is, these are anecdotal. I can't tell you that if you do this, this is what's going to happen for you, guaranteed. I can't tell you that. I'd get in big trouble if I told you that. But I do want you to know that there are some options out there. And in the book that I've written that, that I'm making available to you online if you sign up, I'm giving... Um, links and things to where you could find more information on some of these things. I would encourage you to search this out because you have not received the final word when the, when the doctor tells you you have cancer and we're going to do chemo and radiation. That is not the final word. Get another opinion. Do some more research. There are other ways to take care of this. So I just wanted to share that with you. I wanted to give you some hope. Um, there's other things like uh, Dr. Lorraine Day's diet, and that's been bad mouthed by a lot of the pharmaceuticals as well because they're saying, oh, she's just a quack. But you know what? These things are out there, and I have another friend that used her diets to heal from stage four liver cancer. So there is a lot of information out there. There are a lot of options out there. And once again, like I've been telling you all along, it's your body. It's your choice. It's your decision. It's your health. You make the decision. So have a great day. I'm talking to you from Fiji. The sun's setting down. We're on our way from Australia up to the United States, and we stopped here for a couple days just to get over that jet lag. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to film something here while we're in Fiji. So I'm glad you could join me on this little journey. Thanks so much, and have a great day.